What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Phil Singer Games Character Spotlight with Mike and Brock. I'm Mike. And I am Brock. And today we are talking about two more characters from the Invasion 2090 set. And they're both upgraded characters. We have Terax the Beast Rider and Pulsar Prime. Yep. Two characters I think that needed a much, you know, a much needed upgrade. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. And uh, it's funny because when when they were when they both got the upgrade, I was they were a tag team. Really? That's cool. I, well, I, I knew it was coming, so I, I'm like, yeah, hey, I want to see what happens. And uh, I kept them together for a, a little bit, but, you know, Terak literally was holding Pulsar Prime back. Yeah, he, as far as upgrades go, he did not get much of one. <laughs> no. But Pulsar, on the other hand, Pulsar Prime got a pretty significant upgrade. Yeah. So we'll, we'll start with the, uh, the Terak, the Beast okay. Rider. Here he is. You think I'd figure out where to aim this after 33 weeks? <laughs> <laughs> and there he is. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, uh, I think he feuded Tung Soon as soon as he entered. Ah, uh... with, with me. Oh, with you? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about the uh, the GWF. The, the GWF. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what is this GWF you speak of? An actual storyline. <laughs> I think he feuded with Cannibal when he first arrived. Yeah, I could, I could see that because they were t a tag team. Well, he didn't become Cannibal yet. Uh, although it says by 2090 on the on the Filsinger Games wiki, by 2090 Tarak began going by his real name and continued his feuds with Cannibal. And Murderer's Row, but Murderer's Row I don't think existed yet. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, he, uh, so he got bumped from a one-point wrestler to a two-point wrestler with that upgrade. Are yeah. I, it, what, it, I said it already, but it was not much of an upgrade. No. Do I have his other card sitting here? I think I do. He... Uh, he captured the war game singles for me. Okay. Is, it, it would have had to be a complete, complete, complete and utter shock. Like, and uh, he defended it three times. That's impressive. That's on my little, my little blue cheat cards that nice. my wrestler gets. I wish I would have thought of something like that, or even a spreadsheet, or even a notebook. But yeah. <laughs> and he was a two-time Galaxian champion. Which is for all the level one and two guys to fight over. Okay. He, he had ten defenses for his two for his two title runs, so it's you know kind of average five each probably. Very cool. And that's that's all he did. Yeah, he didn't do much of anything for me. He was a lower. He let, feuded vanity, I think, early on still for me, and didn't do a whole lot beyond that. Looking at the two cards here, I guess it's a fairly significant upgrade. Both his power and agility improved by one. His pin went down by one. He lost a down on his card on level three defense. His finisher went up by one. Yeah, to a plus one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, all of his charts improved except for the out of the ring, which I never thought made sense. This is a guy who lived in the jungle. And he's no good outside the ring. <laughs> Kept that C rating on both cards. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot with him. I wasn't really in. I liked him better as Beast Rider when he was just supposed to be the guy to get beat up. I wasn't as, as much into him as this guy. Uh, he finished off with a 25 and 70 record. Wow. Quarter of his... Won a quarter of his matches. He was one that I didn't appreciate then, but like more now. If that makes sense. Like, I wish I would have done more with him. Yeah, he, uh, 
I teamed him up for you know with different people for a little while. Like him and Sectarian had an average tag team. Mm-hmm. They never they never won a whole lot, but they were you know they they were exactly what you kind of expected to be. Right. Exactly. Low level, low level starter tag team. Which is which is an important role. It is. Fed. And uh, he went four seven and one in his feuds. So he kind of did what exactly what he expected. You know, he was he was cannon fodder for the tough guys. Right. He he is indirectly responsible for one of the uh, classic NGO characters. The NGO Moloch. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait, hold on, which one? <laughs> yeah. I think he was what mentioned in one of the, the write-ups or something like that. Yeah. See, for me, Tarek is probably secretly one of the most evil people in the GWF. <laughs> yeah, like, he just enslaves animals and stuff. Yeah. And... <laughs> he, he has a whole zoo of, of people. He's like, yeah, I need See, a tag he... partner. I'm just going to release this monkey. <laughs> sentient monkey person into my see so he's the joe exotic of the uh <laughs> champions of the galaxy universe i i see him having one of those sleazy roadside zoos <laughs> with no regulations followed or anything like that <laughs> oh like all these he, he takes care of creeper oh creeper is sick yeah sure he is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. poor creeper creeper is his manservant in his in his palace now. Mm-hmm. Poor creeper. Where? What did you have Tarak listed as as his height and weight for? I had him at six feet tall, two hundred and twenty pounds. His official listing is five foot nine and a half, two hundred and forty-five pounds. What He's the, thick. Well, no kidding. He's thick. But yeah, you got to remember these guys were originally in, uh, released in the 80s where everybody was oversized. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 Tarak is another one of those guys that make me feel like I want to reboot my Fed just because I think there's more I could do with that whole zoo thing. <laughs> like you said, it's, it sounds like a pretty dastardly thing. <laughs> Not on the up and up, you know. Yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty sketchy. <laughs> and all his human partners turned on him. <laughs> There's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> We're uh, not getting the big picture. They are. You're right. Yeah, they were on the road with the guy. They saw how he really was. <laughs> yeah. What more can we say about Tarak? Tarek's one of those guys you're going to see, you know, one of those 60-minute interviews about <laughs> the dark side of wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I, I see him. I, he's now officially, to me, GWF's Joe Exotic. <laughs> Trying to kill Carol Baskins. <laughs> Carol Baskin is his cannibal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Funny. Now, about, about improving him. Yeah. Uh, I think I just might give him a plus two finisher. I would give him another guaranteed level three move, a level two offense. Oh, he's only got one? He's got one and then a choice E. Choice E is one of the better ones, but... Yeah. What is it now on the current chart? It is... Yeah, so that's that's a better one. That's yeah. pretty good. I wonder if he can get you down though. Plus two finisher. Mm-hmm. You know, a little better chance to end end the game. Yeah, then I, then I think his pin is seven four is fine. Yep, for who he is. Uh, he only had the two downs on level three, but he still has one on level two defense. So that that wasn't too common then. The extra down on level two. You see it a lot now in the indie sets. Yeah. But, yeah, and maybe bump his ring rating up to a B would be another one, potentially. He's one of those guys you have, you know, five or six things you could do to improve on him, but if you're just picking the one. Mm-hmm. 
I think if I were to pick one, I would make another guaranteed level to three move on level two offense. Yeah. I like I like the, the the chance of the bigger, you know, instead of only winning twenty five matches, he might have got up to you know thirty two. <laughs> right, right. It wouldn't have made much of a difference. So has to get there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think his agility, power, all that stuff's fine for who he is. Yeah. Cool. We can we can switch gears to the man Pulsar. We came Pulsar Prime. Pulsar Prime. And then no longer looks like Carrie Von Eric. Yeah. Uh, for me, Paul Barnes gave me one of the best ideas for Pulsar Prime. Okay. Uh, he told me he teamed him up with Massive. That's cool. And uh, he formed a tag team called Power and Glory. You know, Paul Roma and Hercules. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I, I I went all in, and uh, I still remember they went twenty seven and two as a tag team. He even looks kind of like Paul Roma too. <laughs> Sorry, that's his old card. We already did yeah. that one. <laughs> and uh, they they were good. Yes. Um, Paul Sar was one of my all-time favorite characters from the first set. I used him a lot, pushed him a lot, you know, just liked him for some reason. And for whatever reason, I couldn't get into Pulsar Prime whenever he got upgraded. I don't know if I liked the, uh, the idea of the lovable loser who occasionally will win. And then whenever he got, became so much better, yeah, I just kind of, he, he lost it for me, you know? Because yeah. he received a significant upgrade. Yeah, his was one of the better up, like the better upgrades the game's ever had. I think. I agree. I agree, because his pin went from a nine six to a five two. Yeah. Uh, his agility improved to a from a minus two to a minus four. His power improved from a plus four to a plus one. His cage dropped from a six to a three. Double finisher. Double finisher. Um, a zero and a plus one. So he added a finisher. He added a comeback on level two. Um, lot, you know, he had the same amount of downs. His level one was pretty similar. Level one defense. And then two guaranteed moves cutting through on level two offense to go to level three. Yep. But the only thing, like, he had the still on number one of level three was a power drop two, a level two move. So that right there stayed the same. And his charts all improved by one, except for ropes because it was already an A. Yeah, he, 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 he like, as, as just Pulsar, he captured the intergalaxian tag with, with Beast Rider. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've talked about this where, you know, they, they won it on a fluke and then lost every one of their title defenses by count out. <laughs> Honky tonk, man. You know, just they were eating a lot of concrete, those two. Mm -hmm. Then when he got switched over to uh, Pulsar Prime, that's when, you know, I, I teamed him up with Massive and they won the War Games tag title quickly. Uh, he captured two TV titles. He captured the GWF heavyweight title. Wow. Yeah. He captured the GWF tag with Massive. And then uh, he captured the Intergalaxian title once. Captured it two more times as Pulsar later on down the road. Same as a TV title. When he lost his eye? Yeah. But he's done. And his feuds, he won a lot of feuds. Like he... He did quite... Like he... What, uh, his first three years he never won anything and then became pulsar prime and he just didn't lose anything until 2100 yeah so he, he went he 10 good. years without losing a feud yeah what's funny to me too like and i if you were to see these cards for the first time just looking at the artwork no you're not tagging them up together no <laughs> <laughs> which one looks like the upgrade though Yeah, that's that's a that's a tough one. I, I think the dude with the cape and he's ripped 
ripped and <laughs> you know, I don't know. He just looks more more put together as Pulsar. I always thought that at least. Like he just looked tougher as Pulsar. But that's just me. Did you ever team him with Star Warrior as the Starfighters? No, I was having too much. Him and, like I said, him and Massive just clicked. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, you know, uh, you know, you start off level one with Massive. Level two, either one could do it. But usually I put on level two, Matt, I would put Massive because Massive had all the comebacks. Yeah. And level three, you bring in Pulsar Prime. Double finisher. And if Pulsar Prime gets hurt, Massive's still tough enough to, uh, you know, keep 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 it going. You know, plus two finisher. Yeah. You know, Pulsar Prime had some tags. Massive didn't really need tags. No, he was the big guy. Because he had, you know, eight names as it was. Mm-hmm. He was for the hot tag. Yeah, Pulsar Prime, he looks like he lost a tag. Yeah, he lost a tag, Pulsar Prime. From Pulsar to Pulsar Prime. I'm not too sure when he officially retires. Uh, 2107. Okay, so I got a couple more years with him, but you know, and he he'll have one of the longer careers. Yeah, over twenty years. Yeah. He uh, he's a member of the Flying Fighting Titans. Is in the FDF for two years and then joined the CPC in 2100, 2101. I'm sorry. And then the Centurions in 2107. Yeah, he was with the Titans, switched over to the FDF. And then uh, he joined um, Sam's army. So Commander Sam had a, had a, you know, when he became a manager, mm -hmm. had, a, had a group to fight off uh, whichever random bad guy that they were fighting at the time. Which I think was uh, the royal court of, you know, with uh, Killer Queen and Necros and Exo King. So he got looped into that feud. Okay. It's a good fit for him. Yeah. And then he ended up, uh, you know, feuding Cannibal for a couple of years and then Tendron. So a lot of double finisher guys. Okay. It makes sense. Yeah. Now everybody has a double finisher. He, in and at in and at one move. Yeah, he, he's one of those guys. So I I I, you know, I still like using him. Yeah, not, yeah. Not, not so much like he's he's now the grizzled veteran with that. You know, he's still got a double finisher. Mm -hmm. He's got the Bishop Hell finish. Yeah. The zero plus four. Mm -hmm. Acid rain. <laughs> sprays acid into a rule breaking opponent's eye uh, he just isn't that what it, it was he only did it with bad guys or something yeah but those 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 finishers I don't have them uh, you know do it for bad guys like that yeah he just does it yeah he, he just does it um, I think I just changed it to a moonsault or something like that. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to have you know spray acid into people's faces. <laughs> you only have to do it once. Yeah. <laughs> Why is half the GWF wearing masks now? I don't know because they're horribly dis disfigured because <laughs> of pulsar. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, sometimes Tom's stories don't always make sense in the long run. <laughs> well, it's. It's in the future. Maybe the acid is uh, less potent. People's immune systems are better. <laughs> or cosmetic surgery is much faster. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah. Anything else? Oh, we got to talk about the improvements. Yeah. How would you improve? How would you improve him? I would get rid of the level one move. The level one move on level three, make that a level three move. Instead of the power drop two, either make that the choice G and move everything up or just make it a straight up level three move. I'd give him a third down on level two. Ooh. 
That would be good. Because even if he bumps back up there, then he would get you be able to hit a 50-50 shot. shot. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Everything, I mean, he's already good. Yeah. Nice. Give him a negative six agility. <laughs> there are people who have that now, I think. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we'll we'll slide into our topics. Okay. And uh, we said we're gonna you know mix it up away from you know GWF topics every so often. So we're gonna pick uh, our favorite athletes, but in other sports. So okay. At one point we talked about you know some of our favorite wrestlers. Mm-hmm. So now we'll talk about our our favorite athletes that that you know are in other sports. Uh, like who, who who are your favorite baseball players? My favorite baseball player of all time is Barry Bonds. I know I get a lot of heat for it, but I think Barry Bonds is the greatest baseball player of all time. <laughs> and I think it's an embarrassment to the sport that he's not in the Hall of Fame. He's the man who uh, cost the Pittsburgh Pirates a chance at the World Series. It's true. But that's just because he was on his way out. <laughs> That was Andy Van Slyke is telling him, hey, move in, move <laughs> in. And he's shaking his head no. And Sid Bream drops was that a traitor single. Sid Bream. <laughs> drops a single right where Andy Van Slyke was telling Barry Bonds to go stand. Mm-hmm. I'm aware. <laughs> it was heartbreaking. But, uh, yeah. Steroids are not. You can't exclude one guy for that when so many others have gotten into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Who have had obvious, obvious performance enhancing help, <laughs> we'll say. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, I got a couple, like, Fred McGriff is one of my favorite all time baseball players. The crime dog. He's not in the Hall of Fame, and he, he was a clean player. Mm hmm. You know, 288 batting average, 497 home runs, but mm-hmm. because he he played in the steroid era, right? And he he was only one of two people to win a home run crown in both leagues. Mm-hmm. It's it's funny when you think about it. he won the American League home run crown with 35 and the National <laughs> League with 36. <laughs> yep. Nowadays We're back you to have, those numbers though. Nowadays, you have shortstops hitting 36 or more home runs. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, I remember the home run chase years, though. That was that was fun. Like, I remember going to the, you know, it brought people out to the parks. That's for sure. I remember booing Mark McGuire in Pittsburgh and cheering for Barry Bonds. <laughs> and uh, Roger Clemens was another one of my favorite baseball players. Mm-hmm. He's another one who's all wrapped up in that. Yep. I mean, when they didn't break the rules at the time, I don't see why it's held against them. Yeah. I mean, that was a that was a problem with the league, not with these guys. Was it six or seven times Cy Young Award winner? Yeah, he won't mm-hmm. be in the Hall of Fame. Mm-mm. Nope. And then, and then my 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 third favorite baseball player is something always catches people off guard, but I, I wear his jersey. You know who I'm talking about. No clue. <laughs> Bip Roberts. <laughs> yep. Is that jersey going to make an appearance at Galacticon this year? Uh, no. Unfortunately, uh, I still got to drop probably the other 20 pounds to fit back <laughs> into it. <laughs> well, there you go. You have three weeks. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I used to wear that jersey. I used to wear that down every year to Galacticon. <laughs> My Bip Roberts jersey. Yep. I'm sure you can find it in pictures if you look far enough. Oh, yeah. Same as you and your Jason Bay Team Canada jersey. Yep. I can't wear that anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> I think I still have it, though. I think I kept it. It's like, I can't get rid of this. Oh, why, why would you get rid of that? Exactly. Jason Bay. Jason Bust, as I like to call him. He was going to be the greatest player of all time and save baseball in Pittsburgh. Had one good year. <laughs> <laughs> then you got who is it? McCutcheon. McCutcheon was great. McCutcheon was awesome. Um, he single handedly, well, in that him and the pitching staff 
ended a 25 year losing drought in Pittsburgh. So that was nice. 21 year, not 25 year, 21 year. Won their first playoff game. <laughs> <laughs> then went down in five in the second series, I believe, if I remember correctly. But that wild card game was the pirate game there for a while. They went to the first three of them. Yeah. Lost. They beat the Reds and lost the Cub, lost to the Giants and then lost to the Cubs in that game. Yeah. Who'd your uh, Who'd your favorite football players be? Um. You don't football. have to pick one. You can have a couple. I got a couple. You know. I was a big Emmett Smith fan growing up. I don't know if he's as good as his offensive line, but. He got all the credit. Um, I enjoyed Rod Woodson being a Pittsburgh guy. No Jerome Bettis? <laughs> Jerome Bettis was great, but here's, here's my philosophy on Jerome Bettis. He almost marred his entire career with one fumble. In that AFC championship game, it was a friend of mine, my friend Mike Johnston said, Jerome Bettis should be laying outside of Ben Roethlisberger's bed to kiss his ass every morning. <laughs> he rolls out of bed for saving his career. Because <laughs> if he would have given up that fumble that cost him that game, it, that would have been his legacy. But because, because of Ben Roethlisberger making the tackle, he went down to be one of the best of all time. That's it. The, the I was a big fan of uh, uh, growing up. I remember watching Walter Payton mm -hmm. back in the early '80s, and uh, I think his nickname was Sweetness, if I can remember. Yep. And then uh, Christian Okoye, the okay. Nigerian Nightmare. Yeah, he didn't, yeah. He didn't have a long career, but he was just fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Bears and Chiefs. I'm a Bears and a and a cheese fan. Well, there you go. So I just liked. Well, that, 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 that's why you, you kind of cheer for those guys. You know, they they play for your you know your teams. Mm -hmm. Like you know Neil Smith and Derek Thomas. You know all these guys. I loved loved right. those guys. Mm -hmm. So what about hockey players? Ooh, I got a bunch there. <laughs> <laughs> since I've been watching hockey since I was like. Probably six or seven, but full time into it since I was eight. It's required to live in Canada. Yeah. You have to have a favorite hockey team. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because my favorite hockey team is the St. Louis Blues. <laughs> yep. And growing up, I honestly can say I never met another St. Louis Blues hockey fan until I was about 45. Was it all Maple Leaf fans? So many Maple Leaf fan <laughs> and Habs fans. Okay. <laughs> And, and the reason I, I got stuck with the uh, the Blues, not stuck with them, but picked them, is because we had a hockey sticker book put up by OPG. I remember that. And and I said, I didn't have a favorite team. And I said, the first team I fill up, I'm going to cheer for. Well, hey, that's cool. And it was the St. Louis Blues. Now, Toronto and Montreal both had 11 players. Every other team had six. Okay. You're, you're, you're you know – your three best forwards, your two best defensemen, and your goalie. Mm -hmm. And I remember the last guy to get was the goalie, Mike Liute. <laughs> nice. Yeah, my favorite team was the Pittsburgh Penguins growing up. They've won five Stanley Cups in my lifetime. Yeah. I, uh, um, they, and they I should have never won, you know. It's because of them the uh, the, the drafting rules got changed. <laughs> yeah, the, the decade of tanking. <laughs> Mario is coming up. Well, we're just going to bench all our good players. <laughs> I tell you what, though, that's a good segue into my favorite hockey player of all time, Mr. Mario <laughs> Lemieux, who single-handedly saved hockey in Pittsburgh. If not for him, yeah. we would not have a team here now, and now we have one of the most successful teams in the history of the of the game. Yeah, I I, I grew up uh, – Wayne Gretzky was probably – well, Bernie Federico was my first favorite player. Okay. And I got to meet him in, in when I was – I had a private tour of, of the arena in St. Louis, and Bernie Federico was my uh, tour guide. 
That's cool. And so for like an hour, I'm just hanging out with Bernie. Mm -hmm. We're just talking, got to go to the St. Louis Blues practice and meet some of the players, got invited to practice with the team. That's cool. But I'm like, I didn't have skates. I'm like, I didn't know even that there was going to be an option. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and also Wayne Gretzky. Mm -hmm. I hated him because he was so damn good playing against your team. Yeah. But as time went on, you just admired what he did. Oh, yeah. You have to appreciate that talent. Like nobody's ever got 200 points in a, in, you know, in a season. This guy did it four times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's the equivalent to batting like 410. It's <laughs> ridiculous. In baseball. I'm going to do it four times. <laughs> I think when you could have done more it. assists than anybody else has points. Right. <laughs> Lemieux could have done it, I think, at least once if he would have been healthy. He got 199 points once, mm -hmm. or 198. He came, he came awfully close. Yeah, I think he would have had he would have rivaled Gretzky's stats. I think overall, had he not had so many health issues. Now, I was talking to a guy about it, and he's like, "Oh, he's like, if you would have, you know, if, if uh, you know, Gretzky could never play the, you know, at the level they they play today." I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it would be just fine. <laughs> I'm like, Gretzky was one of the most, uh, 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 they, they talk about when he went into training camp, he couldn't do five push-ups. <laughs> he couldn't last five minutes on the bike. He was so horribly out of shape. <laughs> He's just skilled. He, it was all skill. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you put him in today's world? With you know trainer, you know th these guys were smoking in the in the, you know and having beers. <laughs> yeah, you know they had to supply their own food, so it was all fast food they're eating. Uh huh. So suddenly, you know, he's got his own personal trainers, his own food. Yeah, he would be yeah. just fine. He he <laughs> he, would, he would absolutely destroy everyone. <laughs> For sure, he's a once in a lifetime player. Yeah, no question. And, uh, you know, growing up, Brett Hall, one of my favorites, Chris Pronger, mm -hmm. Scott Stevens. Uh, those, you know, those guys were just beasts. Yeah, for sure. You don't see any of those guys that hang around like that anymore that just dominate for a decade, you know. It's kind of everyone just moves around, you know. Yeah. It's a different game. And... uh who, who would be one athlete that you might be surprised you, you like? Like, doesn't have to be in any other sport or, like, a, a major sport. Could just could be something, you know, like an Olympiad or, uh, you know, Tony Hawk or, you know, just so, somebody like that. Hmm. I really can't think of anybody. Yeah, I can't think of anyone like that. I'm a big Marshawn Lynch fan because of how he treated the media. <laughs> <laughs> but he was he played a major sport. <laughs> so I, I, for me, um, it's a, it's a girl named actually it's a female athlete named Clara Hughes. Okay. To me, she's the, the greatest Olympiad to ever to ever be in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, yeah, well, what's his name? Won 25 gold medals in swimming. And I'm like, well, swimming has got, you know, tw you know, 18 different. Uh, yeah, right. There's a lot of events you can participate there's so in. There's so many events. <laughs> and and I'm, not yeah. away from, I'm not taking away from all his gold medals. But what Clara Hughes did is there had been over a million athletes in the winter and summer Olympics combined. Mm-hmm. She's the only one to medal in two summer games and two winter games. That's impressive. That's really impressive. So out of, out of like a million athletes, you're the only one to medal in. Now, there, there are people to, that have been in both, and there mm -hmm. are 14 people to medal in both, but she's the only one that medaled in consecutive. So four consecutive Olympic games she medaled in. Wow. That's got to be a record in itself there. Well, yeah, you're the only one. So she mm -hmm. she medaled in, uh, um, what is it, uh, the um, the long distance, the, the, like the power skating. Uh huh. Uh, 
and then she meddled in um, the the velo the, the velodrome bikes. Were they? <laughs> was it that? Yeah, yeah, like uh, the uh, or they biked on the road. Okay, I'm 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 now drawing blanks on on. Yeah, I don't know what those are called either. And uh, but, but yeah, so she, she, you know she captured gold, silver, and bronze in different in different Olympic sports. Mm -hmm. But four consecutive Olympics. Nice. It'll never be done summer, again. Summer winter. Summer winter. Yeah. So you got to be training. It isn't, isn't it back? That was back when they were four years apart too. Each one. Right? No, no. It's, yeah, yeah. But they go every two years. I thought that was just recently they started doing every two years. It, 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 it might have been, but yeah. Which would make it even more impressive, you know, over a 16-year period. Yeah. So I, I, I think it was during the two-year, the, the okay. two, two and two and two. So it's over an eight-year period, but it's – Still very impressive. But it's winning that many, that many medals in that many Olympics. Mm -hmm. Never be done again. Everyone's so specialized now in their thing, their one thing. Yeah, like, um, you know, I, I watched a lot of, uh, you know, Olympic wrestling. It's the one sport I try to watch. Mm -hmm. You know, and we, we, Canada's had one gold medalist. <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> Daniel and Gali. I'll get more. And, uh, but, you know, and I used to watch uh, the, uh, the the Russian athlete. Um, uh, he won. Uh, he he won gold. He his he was absolutely phenomenal. Um, Karelin. Okay. He he was he was an he was a beast. You you can watch his, his stuff. Uh huh. And uh, that's a guy. The, the American guy up beat him because uh -huh. Karelin released his hand or something like that, and so he gets a point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> technicality. Yeah. And even he said, I shouldn't have won that, shouldn't have won that gold medal, but. Mm -hmm. At least he can admit it. Oh, yeah. But you, you, you want, like, to see some of these guys who are athletes, you know, and just pick up different sports. Like, I, 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 watched, uh, I watched a little thing on uh, Manny, Manny, uh, he, he was the left fielder for um, Boston. Uh, Manny Ramirez. Uh, yeah. It's just Manny being Manny. Yeah, but he, he 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 was messing around with cricket, <laughs> and he just started killing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just natural athletes, you know. They have a better control over their body than than I do. <laughs> yeah. I I went to school with a guy who uh, he was a black belt in two different martial arts. Okay, in in jujitsu and karate, two totally different martial arts. Yep. And he was he, he was somebody you know, you know, you, you didn't cross paths with. Yeah, for sure, he could kill you if you wanted to. And uh, he had never played baseball in his life. We had to show him how to catch a ball. <laughs> and like one class later, he's playing center field and chasing everything down. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. I'm like, are, are you kidding me? We just showed you how to play 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Some people just have it. You know, he couldn't hit for power. But he, he was slapping the ball all over the place. Like his hand-eye coordination, it was the old, you know, chopsticks in the fly. It's coming, he's like, eh, bing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing got past him. <laughs> and, but he, he swung at everything. He, you know, he didn't have the patience to wait for a ball. Yeah. So that's how you could get him out because he was just he, – he ground <laughs> out the stuff because he didn't realize he could – you know, he should wait. Right, wait for something he can hit. But it's coming near him and it's hit, hit, hit. And it was like oh, – <laughs> You know, you just get jealous of people like that. You're like, wow. yeah, for sure. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I was I was a decent athlete, but I was nowhere near on that upper echelon. I played first base and I played baseball, so I didn't have to do much. <laughs> <laughs> my, my my baseball experience, I was one of like three or four left-handed hitters in the entire league. And my coach was like, just crowd the plate. You're big. They're going to hit you. And then I get on base. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My, my baseball experience, I played in a, in a semi-pro scout league. And uh, we had a couple guys make it as far as double A. Like, they, mm -hmm. got, they got drafted from a league. Yeah, yeah. And they made it as far as double A. One was a pitcher, one was an outfielder. 
And because I remember I, I had a cannon for an arm. I could go from right field to home plate, which was just 275 feet. Mm -hmm. We weren't playing in, you know, massive ballparks. Right, right. But I could I could catch it against the fence and throw to home plate in, in one throw. Mm -hmm. And I was fast. I had one home run in six years. <laughs> <laughs> I had one home run. It was inside the park because I was deceptively fast for a fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> and then I shredded my ankle yeah. basketball and thought I could do it all and I know how that goes I destroyed my knee I played football all day walking to my car I slipped and fell leg ended up <laughs> underneath me tore my ACL and that was it <laughs> yeah, my, my, my football career was was like my friend Rob would, would laugh at me because uh I was a big guy, you know, 6'6", six, six, and I was 230 pounds in high school at 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So I was a big kid. I led the team in sacks <laughs> at one point. Uh, it, I Because, you know, they, they, kept, they kept track of all the stats you did. Mm -hmm. in, in six games, I played exactly 15 minutes. <laughs> I, was, I was the third string tackle. Mm -hmm. in, 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 my, in my last year on in uh, senior senior ball. Nice. I had four sacks, two cause fumbles, and one recovered fumble in 15 minutes of play. Nice. Lo along with like seven tackles. Mm -hmm. And the reason I didn't get more playing time is because I never bothered to read the, the, uh, <laughs> the playbook. <laughs> Every play, I'm like, I'm just going to blitz. <laughs> They're like, no, Mike. <laughs> They know that now they're beating it, you know, and they they could beat me because they, they knew what they were doing. Right, 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 right. This guy's just gonna blitz every time because he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, I didn't do too much with sports. I did when I was younger, but not when I was older. Yeah, I, I played hockey when I was younger, but it's, it's an expensive sport. Yeah. So I played one year and then I hit a growth spurt and the growth <laughs> spurt didn't end. Yeah. Can't buy those skates every year. <laughs> oh, and so my mom just couldn't afford it. You know, we had a single, you know, it was a single mom, mm -hmm. four kids. Oh yeah. I afford it. So I played, I played one year, 15, 15 games. I had 45 points. Nice. Led my team in scoring, but I was also at 10 years old. I was, you know, like five foot one and 140 pounds. <laughs> I'm just a big chubby farm boy. Well, not chubby, but big stocky farm boy because I was living in Tilsonburg. So, you know, you're working on farms, you're a big strong farm boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, body checking was allowed. <laughs> oh, there you when you're go. 140 pounds, most, most other, you know, 10 year olds are about 80. <laughs> I, I know that feeling. I didn't play football growing up because I would have had to play with kids four and five years older than me. <laughs> Because how big I was. So I haven't grown since I was 12 years old. Oh. I've been the same height, same weight. <laughs> same weight, really. I, I'm pretty sure I remember you skinnier. <laughs> well, I've been heavier, too, as a, as a youth. I think my heaviest I ever was in my life was my sophomore year of high school. But, yeah, my weight fluctuates like crazy. Still does. But, yeah, I've always – I've been – I was six foot in fifth grade – and then by the end of sixth grade, or the end of eighth grade, I was six foot three and I haven't grown since. <laughs> it was, I was like, it's always like this much taller than everybody else. And then throughout high school, it's just everyone's just started slowly creeping up to. You know? <laughs> I never got any bigger. <laughs> I guess yeah, I'm I, big enough. But I, I, I ended up, you know, I, wrestling was the one sport I fell in love with, you know, amateur wrestling. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to click. I wrestled for like four years without ever winning. Yeah. <laughs> I never won it's it. Hard. I couldn't, it's couldn't hard. Win it. And then I just got a coach who was like, no, he goes, you're not quitting. He goes, we're going to work. Wrestling, and, you need a very good coach. And he, he, he worked with me and he got me to, you know, all of a sudden it was like a light bulb, you know, that light. Oh, this is it. Yeah. And uh, my, my, my issue was, is I was six foot by the time I was 18, when everything clicked in, you know, I'm six foot six, 
and I'm 180 pounds. Wow. <laughs> My wrist and bicep were the same size. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I graduated high school, I, I weighed 180 pounds. And that was the lightest I ever was in my life, like up and down, like through middle and high school. That was like, I lost like 95 pounds my my uh, senior year of high school. Don't know why, didn't do anything. I was just, you know, had some stomach issues and then we could get it diagnosed. And then I wish I had that now though. <laughs> and, and we had uh, we, we had a coach who was on Team Canada's Olympic team for uh, track. So he was our he was our high school wrestling coach and he knew nothing. <laughs> about, about wrestling other than he can whip you into shape yep and so you know every practice started off with like a 5k run mm -hmm. and you know he's like okay i want that 5k in under 20 minutes yeah yeah and yeah we could we could get it down there so when when it came to uh having matches we either wrestled two three minutes or one five minute round okay and i can tell you this I'd step on the match. I knew a lot of moves, but I'd step on the match and I'd look at my opponent. And if we're doing a straight five, you know, a straight five, I'm like, we're going to go four and a half hard minutes and then I'm going to start to wrestle. Because <laughs> we all had the cardio. Yeah, yeah. We made sure we had cardio. Like my, my high school had four, had four levels. So it was 89 stairs from the top to the bottom. So if we weren't doing 5K because it was, you know, raining outside, he's like, hey, give me, you know, up and down 20 times. So you're racing up the 90 stairs and down 20 times before you even start practice. Yeah. Well, that's the most important thing. So it was just cardio, cardio, cardio. Everybody on the, even the fat guys could do, you know, four minutes <laughs> without breathing heavy. Yeah. Hey, gives you a leg up on anybody that at that point. Well, that's when I was reading Kurt Angle's book and he said, that's the one thing he had to do. He, he, you know, he worked on his cardio and I'm like, wow, my teacher did the same thing to us. Mm -hmm. And he also... Yeah. He also, you know, did some things that were probably illegal and could get him fired now. <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm sure of it. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> the, the, the one day we were all just dicking around at practice, you know, just a day no one wanted to practice. Mm -hmm. The next day he comes out with a big bucket, puts it in the middle of the uh, the mat, and we all put our feet around the bucket. There's only eight of us on the team. Mm -hmm. And we do sit-ups till someone throws up. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure you can't do that nowadays. No, nope. that'd be <laughs> frowned upon, I think. <laughs> but I know, you might it. get away with it. We did it. And we didn't complain. Mm -hmm. And we did sit ups for about an hour. <laughs> like, it even hurt. You're like doing it. You know, nobody's even getting off the ground, but you're doing it. And he's like, nobody's stopping until someone throws up. And, you, and you're wow. just, I, I'm willing to take one for the team. And you're, you're like, <laughs> nope, body's not working. <laughs> finally someone did we we're like thank god <laughs> <laughs> savior <laughs> funny so yeah i don't think that flies anymore no a lot of stuff like that a lot of it for the better though yeah but i'm glad all the hazing is gone that used to happen with youth sports oh it's it's still around yeah it's but it's not, not as, as, it's not as prevalent right right like we had hazing in high school for football. All the football players were supposed to shave their heads. Uh huh. That didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. I had to, I had to throw down a couple times with some football players who wanted to shave my head. <laughs> Not happening, boys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we should we should wrap this up. But All righty. Next, next week we got the Cosmic Forces coming up. Awesome. We might have a special guest because I think I, we have somebody who asked to be on. For yeah, them. yeah, we did. So we'll have to see what's going on with them. Yep. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in, watching here on YouTube. Please check out our friends who do Filsinger Games related content. It's all listed below because I figured out what we're doing. <laughs> and... <laughs> So we have the official Filsinger Games podcast, Roll Up, the Legend Teams podcast, Uncharted Territory, ter Territory, <laughs> uh, uh, Dizzy Dice from Lee Lonpre, and several other things listed here that you might want to check out. Please give them a listen, like, subscribe to their stuff too, so we can continue to promote awareness to this game that we all love. Now let's let's see if we can get us to 80 subscribers. Yeah, we, we gotta be pretty close. We're at 74, I think. Oh yeah, we'll have we'll get that. We'll get that. 
After we're Galacticon, gonna, we're definitely going to get that. Yep, we're going to see. Our goal is to hit 100 at some point. Before mm-hmm. one year, we won 100. <laughs> do 100 people play this game? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do a whole lot more Legends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Yeah. Good night, everyone.